Um, Dylan asks, if you, this is going to, I'm interested to hear your answer. If you had to keep it as simple as possible, what is considered a good skater versus a bad skater? Interested to hear your answer. Well, a, a good skater can get up the ice without falling and can stop. <laughs> no, I'll be honest. And, and can turn. Yeah. You know, and, and can get from A to B fluidly. That's, if that's the question. Mm -hmm. So you can get up the ice. You can go all four directions. You can turn. Tightly, you can cross over, you can stop, you can change direction. That's what a good skater is. So I think the, so I'm thinking of, you think of a good, who's like good skater that comes to mind when you just think of like, who's a good skater? Like, give me a name. Well, see, this is where the, this is where. This is what I want to talk about. Okay. So this is where the, the question will bother me now. That's why I asked I don't know if it's necessarily (laughs) important to be a good skater. In those terms. Yeah. That's why you asked. This is exactly oh, okay. why I asked. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted you to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I see a lot of people like, like that skate with me even that they, they we, I've got one guy in particular, like every single guy that comes on the ice with me, they go, where does that guy play? I go nowhere. Go, what are you talking about? I go, he can't play anywhere. He doesn't know how to play hockey. We look at him skate. I go, yeah, I know. He looks like he was born on a river. He's yep. a, he, one of the nicest skaters. He, he, uh, I'm trying to think who he skates like in the NHL, but it's just an effortless, beautiful skater with speed, and, and it's great. But he cannot play hockey, so skating doesn't matter to him. Right? Yep. And then you'll see other players that uh, Tommy, Holst, Tommy Holmstrom or whoever in the NHL junior that you go. But even I'll take Denny Gore, for example. He's one of our guys, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't consider him like a beautiful skater. I'd consider him like kind of – Kind of choppy. Maybe you know, I'm wrong. A little choppy. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, a little, a little bit choo-choo trained. Yeah, I would say my son. Yeah, he's he not chugged. a beautiful skater. Yeah. But he doesn't need to be. He gets there. And, and like and so now someone on Charlie's team that I think is a really nice skater is Jake Carabella. What a great skater. And he can play hockey. So that's beneficial. Mm-hmm. Right? So he's got like all, all different uh, types of skating. He's got a, a, a good look to him. He's got a nice base to him. He gets there quickly. He gets there with speed, so speed and quickness are yeah. different. He can turn. He's got all those things, and a he smooth, can play the yeah. game of hockey. But, and that's I, I think for in his case, his skating is beneficial to the way he plays. Right, right. Whereas my son is a nice skater, but he's not a not the prettiest skater in the whole world. But he's he's decent enough and fast enough and stuff. But he can play. Yeah. So, like, if you're basing a hockey player on what is considered a good like your hockey player on skating, it's not really, it's not, it's important that you can do enough to get there. Right. You have to be fast enough to play. And then if you're not, you have to, you got to play within your speed. You know, it was funny. I was, I've been wanting to actually talk about this for this little piece for a while. I don't know. I, and this is going to be so counterintuitive or whatever, but I don't know if power skating helps people. And skating lessons actually help. And I don't, I, I really don't. I'm being very sincere. I've asked people that are in the field and I never get good answers. Like, and I do this for a living. So, I mean, I I haven't seen someone give me concrete answers. I see, like, I'll, I'll like, you get to see a, a, one of the clips and all that stuff. And I'll see some of the stuff that people are doing. I'm like, like, what are you doing? It has, it, it if you do something like this is where I think is uh, some type of power skating can benefit if you do it consistently. Like I really do enjoy, and I'll give my, my reason. I really do enjoy, and I think it's beneficial for kids or players almost not religiously, but very often to spend time down low on an inside edge with good push offs. Okay. And I've, so let's say that mechanic skating mechanic is very important to me. So someone would say, well, no, you don't skate that slow in a game. Because I could, you look at clips and you can say, well, you'd never do that in a game, right? Yeah. True? Yeah. So you now if you ask why would you why you'd never do that in a game, you say, no, but what you're doing is I'm working on posture, balance, and push and like full extensions with a recovery in slow motion. Like not slow motion, but like at a slower moving pace. I'm not making. I'm not doing it to make it faster. I'm making it for just proper mechanics. Yep. I've never seen it not work after a period of time. It's always helped every player I've worked with. 
All right. And I could do that with change of speed and add some crossovers and stuff. Okay. But I'll see a lot of things that people do in, in the power skating lessons. And I go, w- why? Because they focus all only on certain things. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, it's just. Well, I feel yeah. like, I feel like you're, I feel like the answer is the, it's the, the trainer makes the program, right? It's like it, whether it works or not, it's kind of based on the trainer that's teaching what's being taught. Mm-hmm. Like, cause for me, it's like, if you have a, a deficiency as a skater, we should do a whole episode on this, by the yeah, way. I think we should. Yeah. Um, if you have a skater that ha- has a, a certain deficiency, then a generic power skating coach doing a power skating lesson in their style of what they like isn't necessarily what you need. That's that's right? another thing. Yeah. So so I so think twenty guys on the ice are all doing the same thing for right. power skating. It's like that's not necessary. Right. Especially when you start to see it at the higher levels, yeah. like when you're when you're a kid. Anything helps. A- anything helps, right? So that's why people might listen to this and be like, well, what are you, crazy? Power, of course, power skating helps, whatever. It's like, no, doing reps helps when you're a kid of anything. Learning how to balance on one foot and do a crossover and go backwards and doing any of that is going to help because it's just reps. But I'm talking about like a structured power skating lesson. As you get to the older age groups, you have very specific deficiencies as a skater. So if you get some, whoever the skating coaches and they come out and everyone has their own style and things they like to focus on and if they focus on just that for you is that going to help like i don't know and that's that's more what i think you're saying where if you look at um the example i remember i think we talked about before was john Tavares, who was like always getting knocked for skating and then he went and had a, a really intense power skating type summer with someone and it apparently. actually apparently and then he actually, I don't think he's a bad skater. Like, I don't hear anyone question his skating anymore. So, it, to some degree, it must have helped him. Yeah, right? This, this is my argument with it, though. Or maybe I got to get closer to this. Yeah. This is my argument with it, though. Is, I'm not saying it can't help you a little <clears throat> bit, but right. did that help? Or did being in the gym getting stronger and moving your body properly help? Yeah, right. And there, I don't know if I can get that answer. Right. Like, in my opinion, the it's the... It's the gym that helps skating. And I'm, I do this for a living. So I'm like cutting my own throat here. No, no. I, I, but being honest. Yeah, I, I agree. I, because I think you have mechanics. And like, here's the other thing. If you think about doing a power skating lesson, like a lot of people like to do videos and stuff, and it's good. But I'd rather have that video in real time so that while if I was, if I was skating that I could actually see like, no, arm swing needs to be here. No leg out, so you can actually see yourself yeah. doing it. That's kind of where that the skating treadmill yeah. is a good tool. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, like, if you go and you do something, you come back and you look, you say, "Oh, I got to do this." Then you come back. Oh, no, you got to bring it in more. Bring your, bring your foot in at a more uh, seven degrees more. Wait, what the, does that? Mean? Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean. So, anyways. I do. Anyways, to answer that question about a skater, what is a good skater? I forgot what the question was, but. What's a good, as simple as possible, what's a good skater yeah, versus get a get to skater. where you need to go. Yeah. You get, be fast enough and be able to change directions. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be pretty. Yeah. And have it, like, have it work with how you play. I think yeah. that's the, the most important thing yeah. about it. It's like, if you can skate for the job that you're trying to do, yeah. then it only needs to be as good as it needs to be. Yeah. You know but what I mean? think if you get to the, get in the gym and you do proper movements, good loads and stuff like that, I think it's, it's going to help you tremendously. Yeah. If you are on the poor end. Let's see.